For this video I will be making a doll based on the Pokemon Absol. Her name is Aurora and she is an explorer because I have terminal Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Brain Rot. It has no cure. I hope to expand on her story and introduce her teammates later on. The base I'm starting with is a Shadow High Diamant. I have already scalped her and cut out her eyelids. First thing is first, I have to remove the stock face up from this doll. I do that with some pure acetone on a cotton ball. This stuff is pretty harsh on the skin, it definitely drives my fingers out. You might want to consider wearing protective gloves or something if you do this. Fingernail polish remover can take the factory paint off, but it's really not very good for doing it and it tends to just squash it and kind of push it around and smudge everything and it just makes it look real ugly. I definitely recommend getting pure acetone. I also go ahead and take the hair color paint off of the scalp in case I want to change that. Unsurprisingly, the acetone kind of dissolves the hot glue that was holding the chopped apart scalp together. And so I'm going to have to glue that again. Next up, I wash the doll with a bit of dish soap to make sure there's no acetone residue left on anything. And while I'm using the sink, I decide to go ahead and be a good still lives at home adult spawn and scrub up the dishes. Yeah, my folks are pretty used to this by now. I chop off these pretty little ears so that I can start my collection. <laughs> Now I sculpt her little puppy girl muzzle with some Milliput, two-part sculpting epoxy, and also fill in some of the places where I screwed up her face with the X-Acto knife while I was carving out the eye sockets. I took some inspiration from doll motion with how she sculpts over the nose and upper lip and leaves the lower lip exposed. When I draw anther characters, I love giving them like a juicy lower lip, so this works great for that. Now I paint the sculpted on bits to match the base base to see how uh, the sculpt looks because it's quite hard to tell when it stands out. It's this like ugly pea green color. Urine green I mean. Now, in accordance with the concept sketches for the character, I add these big droopy ears. I was kind of trying to take after a sheep because of the whole horn motif. I really loved the way this looked in the sketches. I thought they added a lot of like cuteness and um, demure allure to her character, but in a 3D space, it just doesn't really work. This was a lot of work for something I ultimately end up just tearing off later. I wasn't fully satisfied with how the sculpted on muzzle looked, so I added more putty to the sides of it to try to blend it into the face a little more cohesively, but uh, Honestly, I really hate the way that this ended up looking. I just, I didn't think it was good, uh, and my girlfriend agreed with me on that. Fortunately, I was able to rip it off before it set too firmly. So yeah, there's the past few hours of work on this thing amounting to absolutely nothing. 
and I have to go back in with sandpaper and clean everything up so that it looks how it was. So yeah, kids, control your too much gene if you can. And if you can't, I guess it's not that big of a deal, considering I was able to save it. Now I've drilled a hole in the side of her head, which I stick this Lego Technic piece through. It will later become the attachment point when I make her horn. There is literally a Lego in her head. This is the kind of messed up body horror that happens when you're a doll artist. Here I initiate the face up. I'm going in with a Carl Heward pencil. Uh, it's not really working. Like I just, I can't get the pigment to like blend out like I want to. It just kind of comes all right up. So I try these soft pastel sticks as well and those don't really work either. I don't know if the vinyl here is different from what, I, from what I'm used to, or if I just didn't get enough Mr. Super Clear on, or what. I continue this hassle for a hot minute before I do what I must and just switch to using acrylic paint. So to start in, I go around the eyes with this pale desaturated blue. Since it's on a dark skin tone, I'm kind of thinking of this as a reverse smoky eye. Uh, I guess that would be a foggy eye or a cloudy eye. I just gradually blend more and more of the purple skin tone into the blue paint to slowly blush this out into uh, a more gradiated effect. Basically kind of approximating the soft look that I would get from using pastels or colored pencil. I begin sketching out the moon shape on her forehead. After sealing with a coat of Mr. Super Clear, I go in with some pastels to do some light contouring. Get another coat of Mr. Super Clear later, and it's time to start on the white eyeliner. Hello eyebrows, my old friend. I've come to speak with you again. 
I went with little crescent shaped brows so that with the circular moon at the center of the forehead they kind of imply the shape of a triple goddess symbol and now I'm just gonna add some freckles now I dapple stars into the dark blue gradient on her forehead to create like a starry night effect so that so that her face looks like a night sky I think that's very goddess, that's very divine feminine. Once again chronic laryngitis is such a crippling bottleneck in the video making process that I had to switch to text to speech. I really hate to complain constantly, but dear leviathan I hate being chronically ill sometimes. Anyway I use layers of soft pastel and mod podge to build up a midnight gradient on her limbs. Fair warning. Some artists report Mod Podge leaving their projects tacky. This has never happened to me. In fact, I have successfully used Mod Podge to fix surfaces that other sealants left sticky. Moral of the story is do your own tests before committing your project to a fate you might regret. It's time to gloss the moist tissues. Moist tissues, moist, moist. I paint the hands and feet to match the midnight gradient. And now it's time to do her miniature manicure and act like this is a normal girl's night and the entire video hasn't been some morbid dolly torture show. The little dribbles of hot glue just had to happen to fall into this exact shape, didn't they? For her signature curled Absol horn, I start by folding a strip of adhesive back craft foam in half. I then snip notches in the inside. I glue the notches closed to create the curve. I then wrap narrower strips of craft foam around the horn to the base to cover up the messy seams and create texture. I carve more texture into it with a craft knife. This adds to the sheep motif I was hoping to include. I glue in a small Lego bar that fits into the Technic piece mounted in her head. Please don't tell the Lego community I'm doing this. They might sneak into my house and scatter my Legos on the floor. Ouch. I seal this bad boy with a couple of coats of Mod Podge. Then paint it the same purple as the face. I build up layers of metallic paint, iridescent paint, and glitter. Finally I finish it with gloss mod podge. God damage and now my wrists hurt too from typing. I wish I could return this dilapidated husk of a body to the store, but the cross sex hormones probably voided my warranty. Onto the eyes. I layer metallic black paint onto the backs of a pair of transparent, resin eye bases. This requires many layers. I will be doing black skull eras to contrast the white liner. I then brush gloss Mod Podge onto the domes and cover them with black glitter. After sealing that, I paint the inside white. 
Then I Mod Podge white glitter over the paint. Brush away the excess like I'm brushing off a creepy perv. I set in blue rhinestones as the pupils. Finally I fill the holes with UV resin and cure them. Letting them bad boys cook! The resin has completely obscured the facets of the rhinestone, creating a milky blue iris with a white border. This is not what I was going for, but I like the look. Now for hair. I start with a wig cap I made from Mod Podge and 4-way stretch fabric. I glue on wefts I made of yarn. This white yarn was absolutely terrible to brush and nearly robbed me of the last properly functioning lobe in my cerebral cortex. I lost so much length and volume. Press F to have Alexa play Despacito for the lost length and volume. I just burnt myself something fierce. These blue wefts turned out beautifully and I am amazed the strands of tinsel actually managed to stay intact. Way to go strands of tinsel. Please tell me I'm not going to run out of yarn wefts. Spoiler alert doofus. That exact thing happens. Have fun waiting overnight for the second batch to dry. I do this with hot glue because that's the only way for this to not be a multi-day process. Now to cut and style this mop of artist's agony. I'm going for an emo inspired look. Very fluffy with lots of volume. The only problem is that I don't want the bangs to fully obscure my paint job on the forehead. I think I find a decent balance. I snip in some layers so that both colors will be visible. I love the contrast created between them. It is so vibrant and layered. I would like to do another video with this doll later where I make clothing especially for her but for now she will be wearing odds and ends from my rainbow high collection that suit her vibe. This is already almost too much for one video. I'm going for lots of shimmery, silvery whites to really give her that lunar vibe. She absolutely plans her spells around moon cycles. Without any further ado please enjoy the rest of this photo shoot and consider liking the video and subscribing.